Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Holly, I am a book cover designer and illustrator and avid reader. So today I am sharing with you five books that I absolutely love that have LGBT elements as a main part of them and um, it's Pride Month so this seemed a good time to do it. The first one is this one here which is The Binding by Bridget Collins. This is a proof copy but the fi final finished copy is equally beautiful if not more beautiful especially the hardback. This is a book that's been getting a lot of buzz recently it came out earlier this year but I have seen very little about the fact that it is an LGBT love story and I think that's important because it's kind of the main part of the book. Um, it's one of these books that I don't want to give too much away because I think it's a great book to go into blind or as blind as possible. That's what I did. I didn't really know much about it and you you get thrown in the deep end really because the main character doesn't know what's going on and you don't know what's going on so you sort of go on this journey of discovery with them to, to figure out um, how all the elements of what's happening fit together. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an LGBT book, it's beautifully written, and um, yeah, I think the, the romance side of it was very compelling, and I just wish more people were talking about the fact that it is an LGBT book. Second up is one of my favourite authors um, who writes um, mostly about LGBT themes, and that is Patrick Gale's Take Nothing With You. Now this is my favourite of his books, um, it just pips A Place Called Winter, because it is about a cellist, and I play the cello, um, and there is just so much in there that I can relate to on a, um, a sort of musical level and all the references to, to learning to play the cello and, and he has his first lessons and he gets his first instrument and it's all, oh, I love it so much. Um, but also he is, he is a gay man and um, we start with him in the present day and he has gone into radiotherapy, um, he's got cancer and he is looking back at his life and um, yeah, thinking back to the time where he, when he was learning the cello. We get this contrast between him as an adult and him as a boy as he goes through this um, this journey, this musical journey, but also this coming of age story as he comes to terms with his sexuality and oh, it's, it's beautiful. I've read it several times and I just love it. Next up we have God's Grave and Nevernight and the reason I say them in that order, even though this is the first one, is that the LGBT content doesn't come into play until the second book, um, but I mean, that's not to say that the first book isn't absolutely brilliant. Uh, the, both of these books are wonderful and I cannot wait for the next one to come out. It comes out later this year. So because it doesn't happen until the second book, I can't really say too much about it. Um, I can say there's a bisexual character. I can say that, um, what else can I say? Not very much. Um, it'll it'll give it away, but believe me when I say that this is beautiful female driven storytelling um, Mia Corveri is our main character and she is training to be an assassin and she's just amazing <laughs> and um, the way this is written as well is quite unusual it's got a, a narrator who is a character in his own right and he's kind of writing it as a history but in a very colloquial kind of snarky way i think this is the only example of a fiction book with um with footnotes that i've actually appreciate it. Um, the footnotes just add context to the world but are also done in this very snarky voice of the narrator and um, I, I don't know how this could have been done any better. I actually just did a cover of, um, of Nevernight for my portfolio so if you're interested in that um, I will link it down below. I had a lot of fun interpreting this one. Then we have a graphic novel and this is Check Please. Uh, it's by Ngozi Akasu and this is a book that started out its life as a webcomic so you can find it free online. I tend to prefer reading things as physical things so um, yeah I picked up the hardback which came out last year. I think volume 2 will be coming out soon as well. But it's set at the university which I mean I just love campus novels, campus stories. This is kind of the opposite of Dark Academia though because it's just so 
heartwarming and gorgeous. You know, it has its low points and it has its serious moments, but it's it's very wholesome and gorgeous. Um, so our main character here is Bitty, and he joins the the college hockey team, and ah. Uh, He's just adorable in every way. He bakes pies and he falls in love with a member of the team. And yeah, that's that's his story. He's also a vlogger, <laughs> which is a kind of neat part of the story. And um, Ngozi's uh, artwork is just beautiful. It's so lovely. I just, I just really enjoy her use of color and line and all of that. And um, yeah, go and read it. Finally, we have an anthology, which is part graphic novel, part prose, part illustrated story, um, and it's called Secret Loves of Geek Girls. This speaks to me on so many levels. So it's about women and it's about geekdom and there are many LGBT elements in here. It kind of covers the whole spectrum of LGBT people and it's told in many different ways. So you have graphic novel formats, um, you have stories that are illustrated, you have just straight prose, pun not intended, not intended, um, it's not very straight, although there are some straight stories in here as well, um, but it's, it's wonderfully varied. My particular favourite is this one here, which is by Meg Fitzgerald, who is one of my favourite um, graphic novel artists and it's she talks a lot about sort of growing up in the 80s and 90s and so lots of beautiful references and her use of color i mean look at that how beautiful there's a story by margaret atwood in here that's how i heard about it to start with i am very passionate about all of these books as i hope you could tell um, and i was trying to find ones that maybe you haven't heard of before or maybe um, you haven't seen as lgbt books up to this point, um, like with a binding, because sometimes these books are not advertised as LGBT books, uh, which makes me a little bit cross. Um, but yeah, I hope this is a useful resource for you and you found some new recommendations. And yeah, um, happy Pride Month. If you want to find me elsewhere online, I am at Holly Dunn Design on Instagram and my website is hollydunndesign.com and I will see you in the next one. Bye.